to set up a new user in Tracker RMS. First, you'll start by clicking on your name in the top right corner and then clicking on Tools and Settings. From here, you can click Get Started underneath Set Up a New Tracker User Account or Update an Existing User, or you can click down at the bottom left on User Setup and then click the arrow next to Users. This will bring you to the same screen. From the User Settings screen, you will hit the green plus to add a new user. So first, you're going to add their username, which should be their email address that is associated with the email account that they'll be using with Tracker. This way, if you set up our Outlook add-in or you forward any activities or candidates into Tracker, we'll know that is you and you are already verified and those activities will make it right into Tracker. So fill out the rest of the details here, including their job title, and then you'll have to choose their user group. The user group will determine their privileges, so make sure to give them the correct user group. The department area is next. If you have departments set up in Tracker, you may want to add them to the correct department. And if it is not something that you're using, do not worry, you can skip this step. On the next one here, License Tracker User, we're going to want to check that off. You'll also see the amount of, user, amount of licenses that you've used and how many you have available. You will definitely need to check this box off if you would like your new user to be able to log in. The last option here is going to be send notification email. What that is, is a welcome email will go out if I check this off and hit save, and that welcome email will include the URL the person needs to go to to log in, as well as their username and password. If you do not want to send this out right away, that is okay, you can leave this unchecked, and just go ahead and hit save. Now that we've saved it, we'll be heading to our user screen where you can fill out all the specific details for this particular user. So at the top, you'll see the details that we had filled out previously on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you will see that there is a password set up for them already. If you would like to change that password, come over to the drop down arrow here and click on change password and set what you would like. You can then fill out the other details here, such as any phone numbers or if they're in an office. If they're linked to a candidate in the system, you can also type here to link to that candidate. The most important thing to fill out is going to be the time zone here. This will allow for activities to be timestamped properly inside Tracker RMS for your specific time zone. As we scroll down to the organization details, here is where you can choose their department again or update it if you need to change from what you put in earlier. You can also add in a manager for them. And then if you have different territories set up in Tracker, you can choose the territory here for what this user is a part of. Last but not least, on the left-hand side here is going to be the user group. This is what determines their privileges, as I said earlier, and you can change it here if you're not happy with the user group that you had put them in. On the right hand side, we do give you a place to put an employee number if that's applicable or a cost center if that's applicable as well. You'll see here, license tracker user has already been checked off because we set that up in the beginning. As we scroll down a bit lower here, we have our view preferences. This is going to be how they can see activities, whether the oldest activities are at the top or the newest activities are at the top. Now the user can set this up for themselves, so it is up to you if you'd like to set that up beforehand. The next option below is gonna be our managerial view. This is where the manager field above here comes into play. This is only for activities though, so do keep that in mind. This does not affect regular records. So here for activities, they can either filter out and see everybody, their peers and subordinates, only people they manage, or only themselves. That is up to you to decide which you would like them to see. Moving on over to the right hand side, you have the startup territory. So depending on what territory that they're in, you may want them to start up in that specific territory if you have different territories. If not, you can leave what's defaulted. You also have that same option for departments. If you would like to default for them to start up in a specific department, you can have that here. If not, you can leave it where they see all departments as soon as they log in. Moving on down, we have the user configuration details. 
here, you can put yourself in a drop down menu. So you're going to want to make sure to check this off to appear in sales user drop down list. You can also appear in issue user drop down list if you're using tickets. If you'd like them to be a power user when it comes to our GDPR settings, you can check that off as well. And then on the right hand side, you have appear in project user drop down list. So if you're using projects, you may want them to show there. And if for some reason this is just a parser account and they do not have regular access, it's not a standard user, you would just check this off as a parser account. The next section in the user setup is email signature and aliases. At the top you'll see email signature. If you click on the drop down menu, you can choose the email signature you would like this user to use. Now keep in mind the company standard email signature is set up by an administrator and we'll pull in the specific details of that user by using tags. So you'll see here that mine has previously been set up because it does have the tags and I did fill out this information on the user at the top. Another thing that you may have in this drop down menu is a user signature. And what that is, it's just a different signature if somebody has decides not to use the exact company standard email signature and they want to use something a little different. It is up to you what you would like for them to use the user will be able to reach this section as well from their own account if they'd like to update it or change it. User aliases is the next one. If there are any aliases available, they will be listed in this menu here. And if you'd like to send an email from an alias account, if you click on this drop down menu here, you would see the different accounts that you can send from. As we go down a little bit further, we're gonna talk about alerts here. So alerts on the user setup, you can set up any alerts you would like for this particular user for any of the records listed here. Now please do keep in mind they need to be the owner of these records in order to receive the alerts. So you'll check off any records that you would like them to receive the alerts on. And then next is going to be when should they receive alerts. Here it says you can notify when any changes are made or notify them when any activities or notes are added to the record. So you can choose either both or just one. And then you decide how they should receive the alerts, either on screen and or via email. It is totally up to you or the user how they would like to receive these alerts. Again, this is another section they will be able to get to uh, once they log into Tracker themselves and make any updates if needed. You'll also have your plugins here. So any plugins that you may have available for the company can be set up for the user. At the top, the top three would be for email settings. So if there are any email settings that you'd like to choose, you can click and toggle on these here and it will give you a prompt as to what to fill in. If you use any of our third party integrations, they'll be listed here as well, such as ZipWhip or Write Signature. Coming down below, you also have the job boards here. So this section here, you can add any job boards that you would like to be searching on by clicking on new and choosing the job board. And depending on the type of job board, you'll put in either the username or password, or depending on what they ask for, you may need to add something into the options area. Once you hit okay, it will be saved and shown here in the job board section. Do keep in mind you have to have contracts with these job boards in order to search them properly through Tracker. Last but not least is going to be IP registrations. This is done for security purposes. If you'd like to register an IP, maybe somebody would work from home, they would need to okay that IP in order to have access. And if you wanted to take it away, you could revoke the access if there was an IP listed here.